What's going on guys, welcome back to another edition of a vlog format of a review of the game on Saturday. If you don't know, we played on Saturday at home for our, for our final pre-season game. We lost 3-2 to RCD Tondela, I think they're called. Uh, the newly promoted Portuguese team to the first division over there, or the Premier League as you like to call it nowadays. Uh, so yeah, we lost 3-2. It was a really competitive game as you'd imagine. Obviously when we play these kind of foreign teams, they never like the rough and tough of the league, English league football. And there's always tackles flying in. I think there's a few occasions you're thinking, what is going on? Is there going to be a record? Card. In, the, in these kind of games, it's really enjoyable to watch because obviously we had Ray Vellacano previously. Uh, I seem to forget who we had last season. Maybe Osasuna. It, I could be completely wrong. If I'm wrong, correct me in the comments below. Or was it Real? No, I oh, know it is. It's Real Mallorca. And um, previous years go by, you always think there's going to be a little bit of a fight breaking out. And occasionally there is. And uh, I just don't think they love the rough and, rough and tough of the Premier of the Championship football, League One football, as they call it. And uh, yeah, it was a really good game. I mean, enjoyable to watch. Obviously, they play some good football. They play out on the floor, trying to build from the back, as every single foreign team seems to do nowadays. Uh, whereas our style is to get in their face, try and hit over the top, or try and hit on the counter attack as quickly as possible. Uh, so the game itself, the starting eleven we went for. So this is Harris said a clear indication during the week that this will be the team that he thinks he can play at Sh uh, Shrewsbury on s Saturday coming up. Obviously, the league campaign starts. It's the real business now, and we need to start picking up some performances and see if we can actually get some points on the board early on. I mean, we don't know what's going to happen this season. I'm going to do later this week another video where I'm going to predict where we're going to finish this season. But anything in the top 10 for me is a good season. It doesn't matter if it's, in, if it's not playoffs. I mean, I don't really want us to go back up straight away. I will do a, a post on this later this week as well. I mean, I will step up the post this week, but that's irrelevant. I don't think we'll go up this season. And if we do, I don't think it'll be a good thing for the club. We want to try and materialise ourselves in League One. We've got some young players in there who need a, like 50, 60 games in league football who can materialise and be really good players. However, I feel if we go to the Championship, we won't be able to get the opportunity. I think we'll have another scenario as we've had for the last four or five seasons where we're constantly fighting against relegation, buying one season in the Championship. And I really don't want that again. I want to go to football games, I want to try to see us go attacking from the start. We can do that in the Championship, of course, but you get punished for making mistakes in the Championship more often than not. And in League One, you can get away with the old mistake here and there. So I don't really want us to go back to the Championship in the first season, but uh, what do you guys think? Do you think we should maybe stay in the league for another season, or do we, do we want to bounce back straight away? If we did bounce back straight away, do we think we're going to be good enough? Obviously, we've got young players, Sid Nelson, Fred on your dimmer, uh, you've got John Marquis, I mean... John Marcus is not really a young player anymore, he's 23 years old, so, but yeah, on to the game anyway. So 3-2 defeat, the starting 11 Neil Harris went for was David Ford in goal, I could maybe say he's culpable for all three goals, but it'd be a bit harsher for the uh, full backs were Sean Cummings on the right, and we had Mark Beaver starting on the left, apparently Joe Myers picked up a niggle, and he won't be fit for Shrewsbury next Saturday, so that's a big shame. Obviously Beavers is not a natural left back, but that's all we've got for now, so we'll have to see what happens with that. Uh, Set about pairing again. It seems to be the favoured option going into the season. I can understand the logic. It's Byron Webster and Tony Craig. Obviously, Tony Craig's got the captain's armband this season. He's the leader from the back. So apologies for that little interruption there if you've kind of guessed that out. Uh, what I was talking about is the partnership at the back of Sid Nelson and Tony Craig, what I'd choose personally. Um, see, Harry seems to go for Byron Webster and Tony Craig. I can see the logic, personally speaking. I like to see Sir Nelson kind of push through and start as many times as possible so he can develop as a football player. Whereas at the same time, sometimes they say you need to be reasonable with your youth prospects and not rush them into league football too much. Obviously, we look at Jack Wilshere as a prime example for Arsenal in real life. In real life, it doesn't matter, it's not a game. But if, if you look at Jack Wilshere, for example, he had his breakthrough season where he's absolutely outstanding. And he had, unfortunately had two seasons where he's been nursed by injuries. And now this season, it looks like he's finally going to start playing first team football for Arsenal consistently and be a good player that they wanted him to be. Whereas for us and Sid Nelson, I'm thinking we could play him every game next to Tony Craig, develop him as a player, but maybe House has got another plan in mind for him. I mean, Byron Webster is a good defender. I don't think he's the option, to be honest. I think him and Tony Craig are not necessarily the most mobile defenders in the world. That's why I kind of think Tony Craig and uh, Sid Nelson can complement each other. Maybe he's looking for the height advantage of Brian Webster. He does win headers in the air, fair play to him. But apart from that, when the ball's played over the top, throughout pre-season, every single time, we've not really dealt with it. And you can see the stagnated of the defence. I think maybe he needs to address that, Neil Harris, but we'll see what happens. He seems to favour them too. I think it's a good combination to go into for League One, especially going into Shrewsbury. I mean, it's going to be an interesting game to see how they deal with the height and threat of Shrewsbury. They've got lots of pace in their side as well. It's a young, fruitful team there. So it'll be interesting to see how we do. Looking into midfield, on the wings we had Lee Martin on the left and we had Fred on your demo on the right. Fred was an outstanding player again on Saturday. Uh, he took his goal really well. We won. Obviously, he scored to make it 1-1. Play through on goal, counter-attack, Lee Martin picks up the ball. 
played it across to Fred on your demo. Fred beat the man to the ball and then a beautiful dink over the top. I might have a little segment here because I did manage to record it on my phone. Uh, hopefully I did edit that in for you guys. It was a beautiful goal by Fred and it really deserved for him because he's really been throughout, good throughout pre-season. He's obviously got the... Uh, he's been, I think his stand-up performance for me was Bromley, but it was only the first game against Bromley. And then since then, he's kind of just gone step by step. He gets the ball, he's direct nature. It's beautiful to see. He doesn't try any fancy stuff like Lee Martin tries. And it's just, he gets the ball, he knows what he needs to do, beat the man and put a ball in the box. And if not, try and shoot on goal. Uh, Lee Martin himself looks energetic as usual. Uh, he got taken off after about 70 minutes. I think that was more for precaution because obviously he's nursing in injuries after pre-season. He's not really had a full season to kind of materialise. Uh, full season, pre-season to materialise. But overall, he seemed all right, Lee, uh, Lee Mind. Hopefully, him and Fred can stay fit. I think that is our first two pairings to go for the season. 4-4-2, Lee Mind on the left, Fred on the right. Uh, in the middle, we went for Sean Williams and... Ed Upson, yeah we did, Sean Williams and Ed Upson uh, Jimmy Abdu has actually picked up an injury so he won't be fit for Shrewsbury in either it's a big shame because I like to think Jimmy's the kind of player you need in them kind of away games where you're expected to chase the game maybe at times maybe not dictate players often, if you're looking to play at home and you're looking to play the, the leading style of trying to play football out from the back or if you're looking to dominate the ball, Ed Upson and Sean Williams are the best pairing to go for because they are kind of players where you look to get the ball into their feet and then they don't, they don't lose the ball, they'll keep the ball at their feet and they'll manage to get rid of the ball and pass it out and distribute it nicely but um, yeah, I think it'll be interesting to see how we do on the weekend. Obviously, Shrewsbury will be up for the game. We are away from home. You, you need Jimmy and them kind of games, in my opinion. But I'm looking forward to see how Fred ends. Not Fred. I'm looking to see how Sean Williams and Ed Upson doing the season together. Obviously, they are very good players. But with our direct nature, I noticed on Saturday, the ball just kept missing them. All we'd do is we'd give the ball to Tony Craig or Byron Webster or to the fullbacks and constantly just hammer it over the top. In my eyes, if you've got two technically gifted players in the middle, surely we should be using them. I mean, Ed Upson's got beautiful feet. When he's on the full, when he's on the ball, he can just literally can take it on to anyone. And his dribbling skills are second to none. And I think maybe we may be missing a, a catch there. Obviously, Neil Harris has got his nature of going 4-4-2 direct. John Marcus up top winning the flick-ons for Lee Gregory. But I don't know. I don't think it's a long-term ambition where we're going to be playing this kind of football because it's all we're doing. I mean, after a while, we'll get sussed out. If we're playing against big teams like Bradford and we're playing that kind of style we'll get punished by them I think but we'll see what happens as the season develops obviously uh, up front like I mentioned there was Lee Gregory and John Marquis both played really well both worked really hard didn't really have too many chances beat either of them I think Lee Gregory had a chance in the first half John Marcus himself his nature is to work hard and he worked really really hard he worked his bollocks off on Saturday but again no chances for him he had a couple but you can tell he's not really the finisher that we need but I think the two of them could strike up a good partnership together um, he works hard, John Marquis, and he gets a lot of stick, but when he's playing, he does care about the club, and you can tell that. And I love watching him play, because every time he goes in for a tackle, he's trying to get a niggle on there. And I think something that he's probably learned from a young age from Neil Harris, obviously he's been in the academy while Neil House was a player here. And uh, you can tell in his nature, he's leading in with elbows and stuff like that. One day he might get himself in trouble, but it's nice to see, to see that kind of thing, where he's got a bit of edge to his game. Uh, I personally do welcome the option of having John Marcus in the side. I mean, he's not the ideal target man, don't get me wrong. Matt Smith and James Hansen were our two targets in the last two seasons. They did the job much, much better. But I'm happy to see John Marcus given a chance in the side and see if he gets his chance and earns it. Because he scored one in pre-season in a penalty against Bromley. But I think, for one, he deserves his chance. He's been at the club long enough. And if he gives... 30, I, I believe if he, if he plays 46 games this season, which he won't, he will return a fair share of goals and maybe 10 goals this season. And 10 goals in 46 ain't nothing special. However, in a 4-4-2 formation, you're going to have Lee Gregory next to him. Hopefully, Lee Gregory could be the one that gets the 20-plus goals. That's my thinking behind it. I think it's good to see John Marcus back. He is terrible in front of goal. Don't get me wrong. I'm not the one saying he's going to be the option for us in the future. But for this season alone, if we're going to have to go with John Marcus, I, for one, am happy to see that. And um, I'm happy to see him get him the chance and see what he can do. I mean... Like I said, he's not really had his full, full chance in the side. Under the Kenny Jacket in the first season, second season of the Championship, he did get his chance, but after that, he kind of got frozen out. And Harry seems to have talked him to stay in, and he's been playing him throughout the whole preseason. Hopefully, it continues into the season, and we'll see what happens with John Marcus this season. I mean, like I said, I don't expect him to hit up the goal scoring sheet every single time, but. Overall, I think I'll be happy to see John Marcus and Lee Gregory start the season. There's no depth in the striking department. I think we'll sign Steve Morrison this week. I really do. Uh, I think we'll get him. I think he's going to come to us on a free transfer, and I think he's going to agree a cut deal. And I'll be happy to see Steve Morrison come in, to be honest, for at least the season. I don't know if we're going to give him a two-year deal. God knows. But 
Maybe we won't even get him, but I really do think we're going to get Steve Morrison this week. We'll see what happens with that. But the game itself, like I said, a 3-2 defeat. Uh, Tondela took the lead through a free kick that kind of just bounced in the box. The defence let it bounce. Byron Webster seemed to... I think Fordy said that he's, he's, he claimed the ball, and then unfortunately he just... Uh, Webster left it, and it went straight past Fordy into the top corner after a bounce. So that was 1-0. The second, the first for us was obviously Fred's goal. Uh, it was another free kick. It was claimed by Fordy or punched away. Lee Martin got the ball, managed to run, played it over to... Fred on your dimmer. Fred beat his player to the ball, and, uh, and again, through on goal, chipped over the keeper. Beautiful goal. The second uh, it was a kind of shit goal, to be honest, to concede. Uh, their centre forward picked up the ball, had time and space in the in the box or just on the edge of the box. Managed to cut inside on his left foot and a really tame shot, to be honest. But Fordy got beat on his near side, on the left hand side, and uh, I don't know. Me personally, I'd like to see him say them kind of shots. Maybe it's rustiness of pre-season because he's not really had a full pre-season schedule. I don't know what you put it down to, but to be honest, I think he was a bit poor on Saturday and the fans did get on his back. And I know Fordy is the kind of person where he does retaliate. Last season, a couple of times, I see him turn over to the fans and tell him to fuck off. And while it shows he cares, it's also not ideal for him to have that kind of stick on his back because I think it does get to him. But we'll see how we do on Saturday and hopefully he can have a good game and everyone forgets about what happened on Saturday and just gone. Um, the equaliser for us came from Sean Williams, it was a header in the box, kind of free header, it was good to see him tuck it away, he did have a couple of chances, Sean Williams in the game, it was nice to see him getting forward, because when he plays with Jimmy Abdu, Jimmy's the one that normally gets forward, whereas Ed Upson and Sean Williams were both taking turns to get forward, and it was another dynamism, something you see through his game, Sean Williams is normally the kind of stay back player, kind of player in the midfield, however it was nice to see him get in the box a couple of occasions and get a goal of course. Uh, the third goal was a it was a bit of a shit goal to concede again. A free cross in the box and there was a little head over the top of 4D and he couldn't do anything about it, unfortunately. But like I said, overall, I mean, to concede three goals is a bit concerning. We've only kept one clean sheet the whole pre-season. I don't know if that's going to be an issue this season. I think Webster and Craig's not the ideal partnership, as I've mentioned before. But if it's what Harris wants to go for, we're going to have to support him because he's obviously our manager now and we're going to have to see what he decides to do. I personally, like I said, would prefer Sid Nelson and Tony Craig. What would you prefer? Let me know in the comments below. I mean, it's it's all good me giving my opinion on here. I'm not the one that's going to be the manager. I'm not. The, you're not the manager. But it's all what we live for. It's all what we want to debate about. I personally would love to see Tony Craig and Sid Nelson at the back. What would you like to see? Uh, as for the team itself, I think going into Saturday is probably our strongest eleven to go for. Uh, obviously, Beaver's playing left back is not ideal, but he's all we got at the minute. I'd like to see us go for a centre forward this week. Harris did say hopefully it'll be a signing this week and it would probably be a striker. We're probably missing one more winger, a natural left footed winger to replace Martin Wolford. I mean, I personally, I don't know who's out there, but we need a pacey option probably to get the ball and just get down the box and put it in the box, uh, get in, in with his left foot. I don't know what's going to happen, but yeah, I mean, that's me done for today. It's been a bit stagnated. I've not really scheduled the vlog today and I've just kind of spoke from what I thought and sometimes that comes off better. So if you've enjoyed, please let me know. Leave a like if you have and, uh, and subscribe for more content on here, obviously. Uh, it's going to be on my blog, but I also do have a YouTube channel, which you can click on to. And uh, I will be bringing more content as the season starts now. I mean, I'm hoping to bring the match day experience. So I am trying to go every single game again this season because I did last season. And uh, hopefully we see some wins and some enjoyable content for you guys. So thank you so much for watching again. And uh, yeah, come on you Lions. That was such a cheesy ending, wasn't it? <laughs>